You know, yesterday, uh, your company CEO Steve Schwartzman at a conference said uh, that he finds the concerns over B read a bit, quote, baffling. I'm, one, I'm curious, do you share that bafflement? And if so, you know, what is it that people who are concerned uh, about don't fully understand? Well, David, thanks for having me. And definitely, I share Steve's bafflement here. Um, what's happened here has been very surprising given our performance. Um, and I think it's really been a disconnect between performance and fund flows. And what I think would be helpful uh, to make, to help people understand sort of this disconnected reality is to go back in time a bit. We set up BREIT six years ago with the goal of delivering great performance to individual investors in private real estate led by our world-class franchise. And that is exactly what's happened. We've delivered 13 percent net to our customers over that period, three times the public read index. We've done it because we've had the right portfolio positioning, 70 percent in the Sun Belt states, which are growing really rapidly, 80 percent in logistics and rental housing, the fastest growing sectors in real estate. We would be in a much different position if we had bought office buildings or enclosed shopping malls. And 90 percent of the debt we fixed for six and a half years, the last couple of years, as we got concerns about rising inflation and interest rates. We also set up the product with limitations on liquidity. We described it as semi-liquid because we knew at some point there would be periods of volatility and we didn't want to have to sell assets at the wrong time under pressure. And so we put limitations in place, including a 5 percent cap in terms of quarterly liquidity and redemptions. And so what happened this year is we saw some selling pressure from Asia, given the market moves there. That led to some news articles and elevated levels of redemptions, which you referenced. But the key thing here is that performance has delivered, and the structure we put in place is operating exactly as we intended six years ago. So we're right. incredibly uh, proud of the performance and the structure. And we've spent a lot of time on this program, I certainly have, talking about the great success and the inflows that you saw not even that long ago, making this obviously a, a very significant fee generator. But, John, you can't blame investors, whether Asian or otherwise, from looking at the publicly traded REITs that may be down as much as 30 or 35 percent looking at their own piece of B-read up 10 percent and saying, time to sell, right? I mean, that would seem to make sense, wouldn't it? Well, I would say this. If you take a long-term perspective and see how we've outperformed public markets over time, I would argue the case investing with us makes a lot of sense. And there's been some concern raised on your programs and other, do our valuations make sense? Are they lagging? Yes. And on that point, what I'd point out is we've sold $5 billion of property this year, most of it in the second half of the year, at prices above our carrying values. We've also grown our cash flows in BREIT 13 percent, 65 percent higher than the public REIT market. And we put in place these hedges, which generated $5 billion of gains this year. Now, we're going to give some of that back as rates have come down in the short term, but long term, that's very beneficial. And then to your question on the public REIT market, what's interesting is the public REIT market often trades well above asset value and at times well below. So in COVID, public REITs went down 45 percent. That didn't happen in the private REIT market. During uh, 2021, in our big sectors, Public REITs went up 63 percent. We didn't mark to that level because our focus is on delivering private real estate value. So we feel like we've built a portfolio that is perfectly positioned for the environment we're in.